that you think there are a lot of people around the league unhappy with what Cleveland did and the impact that it is going to have on other teams around the league. Yeah, no question about it. When you just say Lamar Jackson's the tip of the iceberg, all these other quarterbacks that are coming up from Kyler Murray, Russell Wilson in Denver, who just went there, they gave up all those draft choices. They're going to have to sign to an extension as well. And then you get into guys like Joe Burrow and Justin Herbert. All of them are doing backflips right now. And being up at the league meetings the last couple of days, everyone has taken notice of – Deshaun Watson, as Swagoo just alluded to, he still has 22 pending civil lawsuits, Greeny. So if I'm Lamar Jackson, I walk into Steve Bashotti's office and I simply put my feet up on his desk and say, hey, great news for you, Mr. Bashotti. I don't want $1 more than Deshaun Watson, but oh, by the way, I'm not taking $1 less. So when you're ready to write a check for $230 million, I'm going to sign it. And as great as Lamar Jackson is as a player, by him waiting and representing himself, he's actually going to go down as a Hall of Fame agent. And look, quarterbacks have always been a little bit of a different uh, and a little bit of a different category from everybody else, Marcus. But now this really could be taking it in a different direction. What does this mean? I, I want all the fans to be thinking about it this way. What does this mean? Maybe the Watson contract, but this general offseason. What does it mean about the role of quarterbacks and team building for the future of the of all of professional football? You, you're going to have to have a special guy, G. And, and listen, that, that is reserved for guys that you believe can overcompensate for the things that you will lose and you will lack because you had to give them that type of money. I think Lamar Jackson is worth it. I don't believe we talk about the Baltimore Ravens like we talk about them or they have a consistency in winning if Lamar Jackson is not their quarterback. Whatever that value is, you have to determine that. And I'm going to tell you this, Bashadi and any other owner in that division, they ain't just mad about Deshaun Watson getting $230 million. They also mad they're going to have to face him two, year, two times a year as mm -hmm. well. But when you think about this Lamar Jackson situation, it's perplexing to me because Lamar knows that he can walk in and request $250, 230 at minimum. And, 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 and it's going to get it. It's going to be a negotiation that he would get it or another team would say, yeah, we'll take it and give it to him. But ultimately... This is what the market is starting to dictate. This started with Patrick Mahomes getting half a billion. I know his contract structure is different, and, and it's fine. You get, you get some flexibility. Aaron Rodgers just got three-year $150 million. Um, Josh Allen got $250 million. I don't know why Bashad is mad. The money has been going up before Deshaun Watson yeah. got his contract. It was going to continue to climb. So I, I don't, I'm not with that gripe. He just knows that his quarterback is going to walk in that office at some point, like Mike T just said, and say, look, you see all this uh, money that they throwing around? I'm going to need that because I'm probably more important to what we do than any of these other quarterbacks, to be honest with you. That's right. And, and, and so, Nico, I mean, it does. And look, I want to make it clear again. I'm all for everyone making as much money as they possibly can. But it does once again go back to Tom Brady, with whom you won all those championships, willingly taking less than market value. And if the quarterbacks don't want to do that, God bless them. But it is going to make differences for their teams. Yes. Well, I mean, look at the teams that have paid their quarterback a ton of money and they and they they messed up and they didn't really have that guy, the guy. I mean, you look at the Rams. They had to go and they had to trade to go get Stafford to go win a Super Bowl. So, you know, again, with the contracts going the way that they are and the guaranteed money going up the way that it is, the quarterbacks are here and everybody else is like they're fighting for the crumbs. Like they're trying to just eat up anything at the bottom. They're the bottom feeders. When the quarterbacks, they're taking that much money off the top, it's going to be harder for the whole roster to feel like they're, you know, comparably paid to what the rest of the league is getting paid. You know, you got a quarterback that's making $250 million or $500 million, whatever it is, half a billion, and what do you think your pass rusher is going to want? So that's going to be the problem. If you want a pass rusher and a great quarterback, how do you yeah. balance that out? That, that's the future of pro football. That, that's what it looks like, and it is going to be on these guys to figure out how to work around the salary cap. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.